Imagine you have a magic toy box in your bedroom. It's a bright, glowing chest, and inside, you keep all your favorite things. Your teddy bear, your toy cars, and your building blocks. But here is the secret. As long as the lid is closed and the room is pitch black, those toys aren't actually toys anymore. When you aren't looking at them, they turn into a blurry, glowing soup. They are everything and nothing at the same time. The teddy bear is a dragon, a cloud, a mountain, and a glass of juice all at once. In the world of science, we call this the wave function. It's a state of pure maybe. But the very second you tiptoe over to that box and peek through the tiny keyhole, something snaps. The blurry soup vanishes. The dragon disappears. The mountain shrinks. And right there, looking back at you is just your plain old teddy bear. You might think, well, of course it's a teddy bear. It was a teddy bear when I put it in there. But the invisible robot in your brain knows the truth. It wasn't a teddy bear until you looked at it. Your gaze, your attention is actually a construction tool. It's like a magic wand that forces the blurry soup of the universe to freeze into a solid object. This is called the observer effect, and it is the most powerful cheat code in the engine room of your life. Today, we are going to explore the five levels of the gaze. We are going to find out why the world behaves like a people pleaser, how your expectations are actually scripts for your robot, and how you can use your internal flashlight to turn a life of maybe into a life of yes. If you've ever felt like life is just happening to you, today is the day you realize you are the one holding the remote control. Let's open the box. Level 1, the Peekaboo Rule. Welcome to Level 1. To understand how your eyes create the world, we have to look at how the robot behaves when he thinks he's alone. In the normal world, we think things are solid. If you leave a glass of water on the table and walk out of the room, you assume the glass is still there, exactly as you left it. But in the quantum world, the robot is a bit of a prankster. When no one is watching, the robot doesn't want to be solid. He wants to be a wave. Imagine a spinning fan on a hot summer day. When the fan is off, you can see the three individual blades. They are solid. They are particles. But when you flick the switch and the fan starts spinning fast, what do you see? You see a blurry, see-through circle. You can't point to exactly where one blade is because it's everywhere in that circle at once. When you aren't observing your life, your future is just like that spinning fan. Your health, your money, and your happiness are all blurry circles. This is what scientists call superposition. It's the state of being in two or two billion places at the same time. But here is where you come in. The moment you walk into the room and observe the fan, or in science terms, the moment you take a high-speed photo of it, the blur disappears. You catch the blade in one specific spot. You have turned the wave, the blur, into a particle, the solid blade. Your invisible robot is constantly waiting for you to take the photo. If you walk around all day saying, I'm so tired, I'm so unlucky, you are essentially taking a photo of a broken robot. You are forcing the blurry soup of your day to freeze into a bad day. The peekaboo rule teaches us that the universe is shy. It only pretends to be solid when you're looking. When you aren't looking, it's a field of infinite possibilities. This means that nothing is set in stone. Your life is only as solid as the photo you keep taking of it. If you don't like what you see, you have to stop looking at it the same way. Level 2. The Flashlight Rule Now we move to level 2. Most people think that seeing is a passive thing. They think their eyes are just like windows that let light in. But the observer effect proves that your eyes are actually projectors. Imagine you are standing in a giant, pitch-black warehouse. This warehouse contains everything you could ever want. A beautiful home, amazing friends, a healthy body, and a spaceship. But it also contains things you don't want. Spiders, dark corners, and broken toys. Because the room is dark, none of these things are real yet. They are just potentials. Then you turn on your internal flashlight. Wherever you point that beam of light, the world shows up. If you spend all your time pointing the flashlight at the dark corners, worrying about what might go wrong or thinking about people who were mean to you, those things solidify. Your robot sees the light and says, Oh, the captain wants to play with the spiders today. 
I'll make them real. But here is the master secret. The flashlight isn't just light. It's energy. When you focus on something, you are actually feeding it. You are injecting your own life force into the maybe soup and forcing it to become a fact. This is why complaining is so dangerous for your spaceship. When you complain, you are holding your flashlight perfectly still on the very thing you hate. You are observing the problem so hard that the robot can't change it. He's stuck. He's waiting for you to move the beam so he can dissolve the problem back into the blurry soup and solidify something better. To master level two, you have to become the guardian of the flashlight. You have to be very careful where you point your gaze. If you want to see a miracle, you have to be brave enough to point your light at the empty space where the miracle should be, even if you don't see it yet. Your light is what creates the object, not the other way around. Level 3. The Expectation Rule We are now deep in the engine room at level 3. This is where we learn that your robot is a people pleaser. In famous science experiments, researchers found that if they expected a particle to act like a wave, it did. If they expected it to act like a solid ball, it did. The universe is essentially reading your mind before it decides how to behave. I call this the script. Every morning when you wake up, you hand your robot a script. If your script says, today is going to be a struggle, the robot reads it and gets to work. He goes out into the quantum field and starts observing all the particles that match struggle. He ignores the gold and the joy because they aren't in the script. Your expectation is the filter on your flashlight. If you put a blue filter on a flashlight, everything you look at will look blue. The world isn't actually blue. You are just observing it through a blue lens. Most people are living in a gray world because they have a gray script. They expect people to be rude, they expect to be tired, and they expect things to be hard. And because the robot is so loyal, he makes sure they are right. He collapses the wave into a gray reality every single second. To change level three, you have to write a new script. You have to start expecting the universe to surprise you. When you walk into a room, you should think, I wonder what wonderful thing my robot is going to show me now? This creates a golden filter. Suddenly, the robot starts observing all the tiny bits of luck and joy that were always there, but were blurry because you weren't looking for them. You aren't lying to yourself. You are simply choosing which part of the soup to make solid. Level 4, the time travel observer. Welcome to the spooky floor. Level 4 is where your brain might start to tickle. Scientists have discovered something called the delayed choice experiment. It suggests that by observing something now, you can actually change what it did in the past. I know, that sounds like a movie, but remember, your robot doesn't live in normal time. He lives in the now. Imagine you are looking at a photo album of your life. There are pages that make you sad, times when you felt small or failed. To your thinking brain, those things are set in stone. They are over, but to the observer, nothing is ever truly over. When you change the way you observe yourself today, when you decide that you are a master captain and a success, your robot goes back into the captain's log and rewires the meaning of your past. He says, Oh, that failure wasn't a mistake. It was actually training for the master captain we are now. By observing your past as training instead of pain, you are collapsing the wave of your history into a new shape. You are literally changing the energy of your old memories. This is the secret to healing. You don't go back in time with a time machine, you go back with your flashlight. You shine the light of understanding and power on those old, blurry memories, and they snap into a new shape that gives you strength instead of taking it away. Level 5. The Master Architect. We have reached the top. Level 5 is the Master Architect level. This is where you stop being a casual observer and start being a professional reality creator. A casual observer looks at the world and says, Oh, look, it's raining. I guess I'm sad now. They are letting the outside tell the inside what to do. They are letting the soup decide what shape to take. But a master architect does the opposite. They decide the shape inside first. They close their eyes and observe their dream ship with so much detail and so much love that the robot has no choice. The robot looks at the internal blueprint 
and then looks at the outside soup and starts locking in the particles to match the blueprint. This is how you lock in a new life. It's not about looking once. It's about sustained observation. If you point your flashlight at a treasure for one second and then point it back at the spiders for 10 hours, you're going to get a warehouse full of spiders. The master architect learns to keep their internal gaze fixed on their vision. They observe their success even when the room looks dark. They observe their health even when the normal world says they are sick. By refusing to observe the old broken toys, those toys eventually lose their energy and dissolve back into the blurry soup. You are the architect of your own toy box. The universe is not a finished painting. It is a giant bowl of quantum wet paint, and your look is the brush. The world is not happening to you. It is responding to you. Every time you open your eyes, you are casting a vote for what kind of world you want to live in. Stop observing the things you hate. Stop feeding the monsters with your flashlight. Turn your light toward the stars. Write a new script. Fold the paper. And remember, the robot is always watching you to see what you are watching. The box is open. The light is yours. What will you create today?